Welcome to Professor Grace's graphic class. Before you start this lesson, download the linked reference file and please watch the ad until the end so you can receive better content. In this tutorial, I will show you how to draw various shapes using different shape drawing tools. Click the stroke color icon in the tools panel to bring up the icon. Remove the stroke color by clicking the None icon in the Tools panel or by pressing the slash on the keyboard. You can bring front, the fill and the stroke color icons alternately by clicking the fill and the stroke color icons in the Tools panel or you can bring up the icons by pressing X on the keyboard. With the fill color icon front, Select the desired color from the color panel or the swatches panel. Select and hold the rectangle tool, then touch the tear off bar to detach the hidden shape drawing tools from the panel. Illustrator provides five shape drawing tools and one flare tool. Select the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle. Click and drag on the artboard to draw a free-sized horizontally long rectangle and a vertically long rectangle, respectively. Hold down Shift and click and drag to draw a square. When you press Alt, you see that the mouse icon changes. Press Ctrl U to show the smart guide. Hold down Alt and click and drag to draw a rectangle from the center. While holding down Alt Shift, click and drag the Alt board to draw a square from the center. This time, I will show you how to create a rectangle of the desired size, not a free size. With the rectangle tool selected, click on the Alt board. In the rectangle dialog box, type width 10 cm, height 5 cm, and click OK. If you take a look at the control panel with the square selected you just drawn, you will see exactly 10 cm and 5 cm in width and height. Click and drag on the Alt board to select all objects, then press Delete to delete them. Select the Round Rectangle tool which allows you to draw rounded rectangles. Click and drag on the Alt board to draw a rectangle with rounded corners in the horizontal and vertical directions, respectively. Hold down Shift while clicking and dragging the Alt board to draw rounded square. Hold down Alt and click and drag to draw a rounded rectangle from the center. Holding down Alt Shift together. Then click and drag the mouse to draw a rounded square from the center. This time, I will show you how to make a rounded rectangle with the desired size, not the free size. With the rounded rectangle tool selected, click on the Alt board. In the rounded rectangle dialog box, type width 5 cm, height 5 cm. Corner radius is the roundness value of the rectangle corner. The larger the value, the more rounded the corner shape, and the smaller the value, the less rounded the corner shape. In corner radius, type 2 cm, then click OK. You see that a rounded rectangle with the desired size and roundness is created. This time, I will show you how to adjust the roundness of the rectangle corner easily and conveniently using shortcut keys without opening the dialog box. With the rounded rectangle tool selected, click and drag on the Alt board, then hold the mouse. If you continue to press the up arrow on the keyboard, you will see that the square corners become more and more rounded. This time, on the contrary, if you keep pressing the down arrow, you will see that the corner shape of the rectangle becomes less and less round. 
Continue pressing the down arrow until you get a rectangle with a sharp corner. Press the up arrow several times again and release the mouse when the desired roundness is achieved. As you have just seen, using the shortcut keys makes it easier to create a rounded rectangle watching the roundness of the corner. Click and drag on the Alt board to select all objects, then press Delete to delete them. Select the Ellipse tool to draw a circle. Click and drag on the Alt board to draw horizontally long ellipses and vertically long ellipses each. Hold down Shift and click and drag the Alt board to draw a circle. Hold down Alt and click and drag to draw an ellipse from the center. Hold down Alt Shift together and click and drag the mouse to draw a circle from the center. This time, I will show you how to create a circle with the desired size, not the free size. With the ellipse tool selected, click on the Alt board. Type with 10 cm, height 5 cm in the ellipse dialog box and click OK to create a horizontally long ellipse. With the ellipse tool selected, click on the Alt board again. In the ellipse dialog box, type with 7 cm, height 7 cm, and click OK to create a 7 cm size circle. Click and drag on the Alt board to select all objects, then press Delete to delete them. Press Ctrl U to hide Smart Guide. Select the Polygon tool to draw a polygon. Click and drag the mouse on the Alt board to draw a hexagon. With the Polygon tool selected, click the Alt board. In the Polygon dialog box, radius is the distance from the center of the polygon to the outer point, and size is the number of size. Type 5 cm for radius, type 3 for size, and press OK to create a triangle. With the polygon tool selected, click on the Alt board. Type 10 inside, then click OK to make a polygon with 10 sides. This time, I will show you how to draw polygons freely using shortcut keys. Click and drag on the Alt board and hold the mouse. If you keep pressing the down arrow while holding the mouse, the size of the polygon will gradually increase and the triangle will be the final polygon. Press the up arrow while holding the mouse, the size of the polygon gradually increases. Press down the down or up arrows until you get the desired polygon shape and release the mouse. As you have just seen, using the shortcut key makes it easy to create polygons by looking at the number of size. Click and drag on the Alt board to select all objects, then press Delete to delete them. Select the Star tool to draw stars. Click and drag the mouse to draw a default star with 5 points. Hold down Alt and click and drag to draw a slender star. With the star tool selected, click on the Alt board. In the star dialog box, Radius 1 is the distance from the center of the star to the outer point, and Radius 2 is the distance from the center of the star to the inner point. And point means the number of outer points of a star shape. Type Radius 1, 4 cm, Radius 2, 3 cm, point 30, and then click OK. You see that the inside and outside points are 1 cm in length and 30 points are created. This time, I will show you how to make various shapes of stars using shortcut keys. With the star tool selected, click and drag, then hold the mouse. Continue pressing the down arrow on the keyboard and you will see that the number of points decreases gradually. If you press the down arrow to the end, you will finally make a triangle. 
If you keep pressing the up arrow on the keyboard, you will see the number of points increases gradually. In this step, you can shorten the length between the inner and the outer points by pressing Ctrl and dragging the mouse in. If you drag the mouse out, you can make the length between the inner point and the outer point longer. Press the down or up arrows, or press down and hold Ctrl, then drag the mouse until you get the default star shape. If you click and drag on the Alt board and press Ctrl and drag the mouse in or out, you can create another shape by adjusting the lengths of the inner and outer points. Press the spacebar and drag the mouse to the right to move to the second artboard page. Select the flare tool to draw a sunshine shape. Click and drag on the left side of the artboard, then click and drag the mouse again to draw the flare. The objects that make up the flare are grouped by default. This time, click and drag on the right side of the artboard, then click and drag again to draw the flare. Draw a flare on the color background to create a more natural light effect. Select the flare on the left side of the artboard and then double click flare tool. The Flare Tool Options dialog box provides options for transforming the flare shape and consists of four sections. You can adjust the size, transparency, and brightness of the flare center circle in the center area. Type different values for diameter, opacity, or brightness to see how the flare changes. In Hollow, you can adjust the flare circle size and adjust the fuzziness. Type different values for gross and fuzziness to see how the flare changes. If you uncheck Rays, you can remove the Rays. After checking Rays again, type different values for number, longest, and fuzziness to see how the number of Rays the length of the longest rays and the fuzziness change. You can remove the round sunshine shape by unchecking rings. Check rings again and type different values for path, number, largest, and direction to see the changes. Click Cancel in the Flare Tool Options dialog box to not change any options. Flare tool is a tool that is not often used. However, when you need the effect of sunshine, you can use the flare tool to easily draw an illustration of sunshine. Press the spacebar and drag the mouse to the right to move to the third artboard page. On this page, there are various shapes drawn by different shape drawing tools that we learned during this time. I will show you some useful ways to apply these forms. First, I will show you how to make semicircles. Rather than drawing a semicircle with the pen tool, editing the circle to create a semicircle makes the shape perfect. In the tools panel, Select the Direct Selection tool, click to the right of the first circle, and drag to select the anchor point. Press Delete to create a vertical semicircle. This time, click and drag the anchor point at the bottom of the second circle to select the anchor point. Press Delete to create a horizontal semicircle. However, the shapes of this semicircle are disconnected lines rather than closed fields. Press Ctrl Y to see outline view. You see that all other shapes are closed, but the semicircles are disconnected. Press Ctrl Y again to return to preview view. 
in most illustrator works, except in special cases, you must work with the object in a fully closed field state to minimize future errors. With the direct selection tool selected, click and drag the mouse to the top and bottom of the first semicircle to select the anchor points that should be connected together. Go to the object menu and select Pass, Join, or press Ctrl J. A broken line is connected to create a closed semicircle. Click and drag the mouse to the left and right side of the semicircle to select the anchor point together. Press Ctrl J to connect a broken line. This time, I will show you how to transform the shape of the corners of triangles, stars, and polygons. Press V to select the selection tool. After selecting the triangle, go to the Effect menu and select the Stylize Round Corners. In the Round Corners dialog box, check Preview. Type Radius 2 cm and click OK. You see that the corner of the triangle has been rounded. After selecting the star, go to the Effect menu and select Round Corners or press the shortcut key R to Shift Ctrl E. In the Round Corners dialog box, check Preview. Type Radius 1 cm and click OK. You see that the pointed star has been rounded. After selecting the hexagon, go to the Effect menu and select Apply Round Corners or press the shortcut key Shift Ctrl E. Instead of opening the Round Corners dialog box, you see that the hexagon has been rounded to the end with the same round value applied to the star. This time, I will show you how to use the shape to convert shapes to other shapes. After selecting the pink circle, go to the Effect menu and select Convert to Shape Rectangle. With Preview checked in the Shape Options dialog box, click Absolute and Relative alternately to see how the shape changes size. With the Relative Size option selected, you see that the deformed shape is larger than the object's path selection. Type 0 cm for extra width and extra height, and then click OK. You see that the circle is converted to a square without the added size. After selecting the second triangle, go to the Effect menu and select Convert to Shape Rounded Rectangle. In the Shape Options dialog box, Click Absolute and Relative alternately to see how the shape changes size. With the Relative Size option selected, you see that the deformed shape is larger than the object's path selection. Type 1 cm for corner radius, then click OK. You see that the extra space is added to the original triangle and the triangle is converted to the rounded rectangle. After selecting the third star, go to the Effect menu and select Convert to Shape, Ellipse. In the Shape Options dialog box, click Absolute and Relative alternately to see how the shape changes size. With the Relative Size option selected, you see that the deformed shape is larger than the object's path selection. Click OK in the Shape Options dialog box. You see that the extra space is added to the original star and the star is converted to a circle. Press the spacebar and drag the mouse to the right to move to the first artboard page. This time, I will show you how to transform the basic shapes into flowers or other shapes by applying the Poker and Broad effect. Select the rectangle. Go to the Effect menu and select Distort and Transform Poco and Blower. In the Poco and Blower dialog box, 
check preview and move the slider slightly toward the left poker to see the change in shape. Move the slider to the right broad little by little to see the shape change. In the poker and blower dialog box, type 100% and click OK. You see that the rectangle has been changed to a four-leaf clover shape. After selecting the rounded rectangle, go to the Effect menu and select the poker and blower. In the poker and blower dialog box, check Preview and move the slider slightly toward the left poker to see the change in shape. Move the slider to the right broad little by little to see the shape change. In the poker and blower dialog box, type 110% and click OK. You see that the rounded rectangle has been changed into a flower shape. Select the circle and press Alt to Shift Ctrl E. In the poker and blower dialog box, check Preview and move the slider slightly toward the left poker to see the change in shape. Move the slider to the right broad little by little to see the shape change. In the poker and blower dialog box, type 25% and click OK. You see that the circle has been changed to round X shape. Select the hexagon and press Alt Shift Ctrl E. In the poker and blower dialog box, check Preview and move the slider slightly toward the left poker to see the change in shape. Move the slider to the right broad little by little to see the shape change. In the poker and blower dialog box, type 40% and click OK. You see that the hexagon has been changed to a flower shape. After selecting the flower object, hold down Alt Shift and drag the mouse to copy. After selecting the original flower, press Ctrl C to copy it and press Ctrl F to paste it front. Hold Alt Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size. In the swatches panel, Click the second color in the Flower 1 folder. Press Ctrl F again to paste it front. Hold down Alt Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size. In the Swatches panel, click the third color in the Flower 1 folder. Press Ctrl U to show Smart Guide and select the Ellipse tool. Move the mouse to the center of the flower, then hold down Alt Shift and draw a small circle in the center. In the Swatches panel, click the first color in the Flower 1 folder. Move the mouse to the center of the pasted flower. Hold down Alt Shift and draw a circle in the center. In the Swatches panel, click the second color in the Flower 1 folder. With the circle selected, press Ctrl C to copy, then press Ctrl F to paste front. Hold down Alt Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size. In the Swatches panel, click the third color in the Flower 1 folder. As you see now, you have a different shape with the same flower leaf. Select the last shape and press Alt Shift Ctrl E. In the Poco and Blow dialog box, check Preview and move the slider slightly toward the left poker to see the change in shape. Move the slider to the right blower little by little to see the shape change. In the Poco and Blow dialog box, type 15% and click OK. After selecting the flower, Press Ctrl C to copy it and press Ctrl F to paste it front. Hold down Alt Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size. In the Swatches panel, click the second color in the Flower 2 folder. Press Ctrl F again to paste the flower leaf front. Hold Alt Shift 
and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size. In the swatches panel, click the third color in the flower 2 folder. Press Ctrl F again to paste it front. Hold down Alt to Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size. In the swatches panel, click the first color in the flower 2 folder. After selecting all the flower leaves, hold down Alt to Shift and drag the mouse to duplicate. Select a pasted flower to apply the shadow effect. Go to the effect menu and select stylize drop shadow. Check preview in the drop shadow dialog box. Type 0 cm for X offset and Y offset and click OK. Applying a drop shadow effect gives a sense of space to objects. This time, I will show you how to edit the effect you would already applied. Select the second leaf of the first flower. In the Appearance panel, click Poker and Blot or double-click the FX icon. In the Poker and Blot dialog box, check Preview. Type 200% and click OK. As such, Effects applied to an object can be changed at any time using the Appearance panel. When you select a biggest flower leaf of the second flower, you see that the path shape of the selection is a hexagon, not a flower shape. This is because we changed the shape by applying the purple and blue effect to the hexagon. Since the effect is editable in this state, you can change the value at any time using the Appearance panel. However, if you no longer need to change the effect, you can change the shape of a path to the shape in which the effect is applied. Select the biggest flower leaf of the second flower. Go to the Object menu and select Expand Appearance. You see that the path selection has changed to a flower shape rather than a hexagon. So far, you will learn how to use various drawing tools, how to use useful shortcuts, how to make the corner shape of basic shapes rounded, and how to convert shapes of shapes into completely different shapes by applying poker and blow effect. After you select Rounded Rectangle tool, Polygon tool, Star tool, if you press down the up or down arrows, press shortcut, or change the options in the dialog box to get a variety of shapes you desired, the Illustrator will draw the shape based on the final setting of the tools. For example, if you have drawn a star with 20 points, after that, you cannot draw 5 point star using star tool. In this case, if we want to revert to the default star shape, the first way is to press the shortcut until it becomes the original star shape. After changing to a star, click and drag again to draw a star. If this is cumbersome, the second method is to close the program and double-click the Illustrator shortcut icon on the desktop or the Illustrator document and press Alt-Shift-Control together almost simultaneously. This will return the program settings to their default state. The second method is a very convenient troubleshooting method when you are embarrassed by the error while you are working with an Adobe program, a Microsoft program, etc. Or when you accidentally change program settings unintentionally. Illustrator's various shape drawing tools are very important tools that you use often when drawing illustrations. If we want to draw shapes of rectangles, rounded rectangles, circles, polygons, and stars, use the shape drawing tools. But if you need to draw free shapes that you cannot draw with the shape drawing tools, use the pen tool. 
I hope this tutorial has helped you understand how to use the shape drawing tools. Well, this is the basics of the shape drawing tools in Illustrator. Thank you for watching Professor Grace's Illustrator lecture. Please watch the next video in order to follow all the courses without skipping a lesson. To keep learning and master Illustrator, please press the subscribe and the like buttons.